math. So you're wanting your child to excel in math. Whether you're homeschooling or whether your child goes to public school and you just want to supplement the material at home. Most of that standalone curriculum out there can be completely overwhelming. Some just kind of seems empty, while others you kind of have to start from kindergarten with a curriculum and work your way through it because if you don't, it just messes everything up and it doesn't follow the standardized. Check out my hidden gem, I like to call it Make Math Meaningful, and it is written by David Quinn. My name is Leilani, this is Living with Eve, and if you like this video, make sure to give us a big thumbs up, but do consider subscribing right down below, and if you want to get notifications whenever we upload a video, which is usually once a week, click on that notification bell. That way you can journey with us because your child is exceptional too. So I am totally a math person. I taught in the public and the private school for over 10 years. I also tutored Title I math in the private school as well as high school math. And I've seen hundreds of homeschool curriculums out there because I do homeschool evaluations for the state of Florida. Make Math Meaningful is amazing and I'm gonna tell you why. This curriculum uses inductive learning. Inductive learning helps students gain a deeper understanding and it is done in a three-step process. Number one, they're first going to explore the topic. Two, they're going to group or explain the concept or the topic. And number three, is expanding the topic or concept. Week five, exploring the concept. Week nine, expanding the concept, making equal. Exploring the concept, explaining the concept, exploring the concept, you get the idea. It does much more than just introduce the concepts to the students, like addition and subtraction or greater than or less than, but it actually forces the students to explore why it works, how it works, and the relationship between numbers. They're gonna begin to organize and categorize numbers on their own. And they're gonna explain to you how it works. This really builds a good, solid foundation. I mean, it's critical thinking. Now, it sounds overwhelming, right? But not really, because this curriculum has a very, very gentle approach. It's very easy to understand. It's very easy to understand. For example, in kindergarten, you're really gonna focus on one activity through the week, whether it's looking, comparing the difference between tall things and short things. You will take books and organize them from tallest to shortest, cereal boxes from tallest to shortest, pencils from shortest to tallest. And it's really good for those struggling learners that can't seem to grasp the concepts. One thing I like about this math is that there's games, stories, all that fun stuff. Another thing too is I really think this curriculum could really help support public school education because there are a lot of holes and, and teachers miss things and this I feel like can just kind of keep them on track and help them understand those whys and hows. So another perk to this curriculum is you don't have to go out and buy a whole another set of materials to kind of help your kid learn math. I mean a lot of it is household equipment. Really the only thing you're going to need to buy is these blocks or you could get uh, Legos counting chips, and color-coded chains. They do have a kit that you can buy from them, but because I was a former teacher, I kind of had those supplies, or you could even find them at the dollar store, some of them, or you could order them online through Amazon, but I don't have an affiliation there. It's just, I'm just saying Amazon has a lot of stuff. But the company itself does have a kit that they put together that you can purchase from them. So let's take a look inside the book. So let's start by exploring kindergarten. First, it comes with a parent guide and it comes with a student workbook. For kindergarten, obviously, the parent guide is much thicker than the student workbook, and I'll show you why. Week number two, they're gonna show you where the materials are listed. So you have forks, three long and three short, at least six of each of the following pair of objects, crayons, pencils, pipe cleaners, drinking straws, all the kind of stuff that you could either buy at the dollar store or you have laying around your kitchen or your house. Of course, exploring the concept lesson. This is what you're going to do. It's scripted, and this is what you're going to say. And you want to follow what it says because they're going to be starting to introduce certain vocabulary words that are important for the child to understand. There is a weekly extension, but like I said, this is week two for kindergarten, and that's it. One page, and there's no workbook involved. 
Let me show you week five for kindergarten. Same thing again. You're going to need scissors, but this time you're going to need the workbook and their little paper dolls that you're gonna cut out. Once again, everything that you need to do and everything that you are going to say. Right here, everything that you're gonna do and everything you're gonna say and so forth and then it's done. This really only takes about 15 minutes. They once again have the weekly extension, spread this activity out over the whole week, in addition to expanding the concept of equal and not equal, because that's what you're learning, making two groups equal. You are also teaching combination, reasoning, that is the identification of all possible combinations of comparison. This is a very advanced reasoning process. Help your child to be thorough and logical. Once again, critical thinking. <laughs> So now I'm going to show you level four, which is way more advanced than kindergarten. Each chapter now is going to be divided into activities. So you're going to have activity A, activity 3B, this one's a little bit longer, and 3C. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over to activity 3E, which is multiplication and division. Now you're going to need student pages 28 through 38 along with graph paper and you're exploring the concept. Now over here, I'll go ahead and get us to 3E by looking at the bottom, they're numbered. There's some graph paper right there so you don't really have to purchase any. And now we have activity 3E. So coming back over here, you're going to begin your discussion with this story. This is what you say. There's nothing you need to do with the workbook for day one. Day two, you or child need to cut the graph paper to following dimensions. Three, arrange the graph paper. This is what you do. This is what you say. Four, giving your child another story. This is what you do. This is what you say. And this one, like I said, is a little bit long, so obviously each of these numbers, you could do like two or three of them a day. You can figure out and adjust to what's necessary for your child. And of course, down here, it says when you get to number nine, give your child student pages 32 through 42. So of course, you're gonna spend some time exploring the concept with the student, and then when you get to the pages, you're gonna have them explore the concept on their own. And here's what some of the pages look like for this particular activity. What's also nice about this book in the very beginning, they're gonna tell you what the objectives are, and then they give you a suggested teaching schedule. So if you don't know what to do, how many weeks, so forth, you can try their schedule out and adjust if necessary. Table of contents, and a nice short materials list that you'll need. So now let's see a lesson in action. Okay, Miss Hannah, I'm going to use these links right here to measure, I know you're excited, different objects. So I want you to measure my iPad. I'm just gonna give you some red links. Links. And I want you to measure how long the iPad is. We want to go from this way to this way because we are measuring the length from the top to the bottom. All right, so let's do our next object. We're going to measure our uh, book. gonna fit just right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, actually that works. Yay! Okay, now take the red one. Okay, the book and the iPad. Now I want you to look at the two and tell me, are they equal or unequal? You're gonna compare? Unequal. All right, how are you going to make them equal? So are these equal or unequal? Equal. Good, now put the yellow ones back on. Change the shorter one. 
longer one. How are you going to do that? By adding. How many are you going to add? Um, one, two, three. three. I'm good at math, guys. Yeah, and I also encourage her to just play with these. I think it's good with counting and manipulation and sensory, because that's what kids really want to do at the end of the day. And they build and create out of these. So I'm gonna confess, my kids just blew through this curriculum. And they're smart kids, and they're actually pretty good at math. I did end up supplementing with some other stuff, but I did really like how this curriculum gave them an understanding of why and how things work mathematically. So do you wanna know my favorite history hidden gem? Well, make sure to click on that link right up above, and it is called Truth Quest, and you should just go check it out right now. Make sure you give us a big thumbs up and let us know in the comments what kind of math curriculum you guys use and what you like. Make sure you subscribe, click on that notification bell, and it'll tell you whenever we upload a video so that you can journey with us because your child is exceptional too. Until then, bye.